Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello and welcome to the podcast. My name is Bree Noble and I am excited to be here today with Ariane from Olympia Coaching. And of course, on this show, we talk a lot about making money from music, being profitable, but we also know that the mindset behind what we do is so related to the profitability. And if you're thinking, okay, you're going to talk about mindset and you're going to like move on to the next episode. No, 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 not so fast. It's really important because I have found in my career, and I know we'll talk about this with Ariane today, that like mindset is so much of what makes us profitable musicians. We need to have confidence. We need to have like have dealt with all the fears that are holding us back. We need to do things that are uncomfortable and know that we can handle it. All those things are important for becoming a profitable musician. So with that being said, I'm excited to get into this uh, with Ariana and I. We're going to talk too about um, some of the things that come up when we are introverts. And I am not an introvert, so I'm really excited to talk about this because I know a lot of the students that I work with are. So um, before we do that, though, I'd love to know your background, Ariane. Like, how did you get into involved in the music business, and how did you get started with this coaching program that you have now? Yeah, so hello everyone and, and thank you Brie for having me here on your show. I really appreciate it. And so I started in my career in the music business just after graduating uh, university. I've always wanted to work in music. Um, like many of us, music was my first love and my big passion. So I moved to London to work in the music industry. I worked in the industry for about 15 years, then relocated to Barcelona, where I ended up booking artists for a 5,000 capacity venue. So I was booking all the electronic music artists every weekend for this venue, which was fantastic, until it wasn't anymore. <laughs> as I was basically growing older. And also I had started my own path in personal development for my own interest and curiosity and my own sake. Um, That was also related to my spiritual path. And what I was learning was just really life-changing for me. Um, All these concepts that now, where I'm standing now, it feels very integrated, let's say. But at the time, it felt very new to me, the fact that, wow, I create my own reality. My thoughts really are at the root of everything and my beliefs. And, um, you know, I get to change myself if I want to experience a different reality. So I just found that so fascinating and incredible and also what happened was that my job in the music industry which had been my job as a booker in in this venue which had been so fulfilling and fun and you know I I, I loved it because I was able to book any artist that, that I wanted I got to give a lot of artists the chance to play mm-hmm. in Barcelona for the first time so that was very fulfilling but it, there came a point where it wasn't fulfilling for me anymore to where for where I was on my journey and it wasn't meaningful anymore. And I really wanted to do something that mattered more to me with the time that I had left on this earth. And I really wanted to help artists um, in a more direct way and and people from the music industry um, by helping them really be be the best that they can be and, and achieve their potential and achieve their dreams. So this is why I retrained as a coach and created my business to support people doing that exactly like you do as well. I love that. And 
you know, as you're talking, like I've definitely talked about how our thoughts create our feelings, our actions and our results. Um, and like you said, it's become just an integrated part of the way that I think now. And it's hard to like realize there are people that don't have this piece of information, which now seems like just like my worldview, right? But, uh, you know, before that, it can completely change the way that you think because you feel like you are a victim of your circumstances and you don't have any chance to change that. So why do you think that so many people don't kind of have that outlook on the world? You know, like it's, it's, we are full of programming and conditioning. So in a way it's not our fault, you know, depending on how we were raised and, even coaching, I know coaching is, is quite big in the US. It's not so big in Europe. So we don't even have that mindset so much here in Europe. And I'm French. I know that in France, we complain a lot all the time. French people just complain. And so it's easy to get into that victim mindset, like you said, and, and let go of your power and just blame and, and just complain and feel like you're not in control when you are. And uh, it's so, so much more empowering, right? To actually take responsibility and to realize, okay, there's so many things I can do within myself and, and how will my transformation is what's gonna create those different results. So I don't know why, um, we, I think we all are at different stages on our, of our journey and of our personal growth journey. And, um, you know, I think there's the right timing for everyone as well. For some reason, it's going to happen. This information is going to come to us when, when it's the right time, maybe. And also, I feel like it's also our, it's our responsibility, right? To, to get that information, to read those books, to listen to those podcasts, to empower ourselves. So it's up to us. It's up to us. But I know that sometimes it feels easier to stay stuck in the victim mindset. It's, it feels easier, but it's actually not easier. Yeah, no, absolutely. We do have to do the work. And, you know, there's that whole saying, like, if, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And sometimes the teacher is, you know, just some friend of yours mentioning that they read a particular book or you stumble upon a podcast or something. And it's like you fall down this rabbit hole and then you're like, oh, like there's this whole world of self-development, you know? So yeah. I, it's true. It's like, you do have to be ready to accept it. But how have you seen this affect artists' ability to make income, to become profitable, to actually, you know, pursue this as a career? Because um, I know that I've certainly dealt with plenty of artists with mindset that, you know, you can't make money from music. Why should I even try? And, and things like that. Yeah, so mindset is at the root of everything. Like what you believe is possible for you, what you believe about the music industry. Um, it's, it's really at the root of everything, right? Because the, it really starts with, first of all, like how do you see the world? How do you see the music industry? Because if you subscribe to that idea that the, the poor artist mentality or whatever, then that's what you're going to create. Then you're not going to free yourself from that, from that box. And I know this is your specialty, right? To show artists like all the different ways they can make money. Um, and it starts with believing in yourself. It starts with allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to even be on that path. I know I've worked with a lot of clients who have a day job and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And they've been doing music all, all their lives on the side. But one of the things I work with some of my clients on is actually helping them really own their artist identity. Even though they've been doing music for ages, it's like they, they shy away from even presenting themselves in that way or claiming that because they maybe haven't made a lot of income from their music. So they feel like an imposter. So the first step is also to declare it and to own that, to own your choice and, and owning your identity as an artist. Oh yeah, that's really good. Cause I see some artists, they, you know, they try to do like branding such that their artist brand is so different from their personal name or anything that nobody knows that it's them. And they, they just think, well, I want my music to stand alone and I want to just do this online under this totally different name. 
And if I can't make it that way, then my music isn't good enough. And, you know, my personal feeling is you really need to have a personal brand nowadays and people need to know who you are and you need to connect with people on a personal level and all that, which you can't do when your brand is totally disconnected from who you are as a person. A lot of artists want to just be like, I don't even want to tell my family and friends that I'm doing this because I don't want them to judge me. And I'll do you experience a lot of that. Right. And this is why it's so important, right? That they work on their fears. If that's your case, if you have the, this fear of judgment, um, fear of failure, all those things, first of all, it's completely normal because what you're doing is brave, it's courageous. And this is why it's so important for you to work on those fears. If if you don't allow if you if you if you're shy about presenting yourself as an artist, even to your own loved ones, then how the hell are you going to promote yourself in a big way to the world? And I agree about like creating this connection with your audience in this day and age with the type of social media that we consume. It's a lot, um, it's very personable and we want to see the real person behind, behind the music. And unfortunately, the music doesn't speak for itself. Unfortunately, that's not the case for anyone who has a business. You can be great at what you do, but if you don't market and promote and do all those business things and create relationships and network, unfortunately, you're not going to get to where you want to be. And if things are not working out exactly how you want right now, don't make that mean something about your music or about yourself, because it's not the best music in the world that that's um, that gets the most heard, right? Like music, music is so subjective anyway. Music taste, so it's it's not just about the quality of music. It is about the quality of music, but it's not just about that. So it, you also have to be careful about not making your outer results mean something about your music, and then therefore giving you a good, really good reason to to stay stuck or to even give up. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's definitely not just about the music for sure. And like you said, not being attached to that result, just saying, okay, I can change this result, but I need to change my thoughts about how I approach it and all of that. And then, and then it will follow. So that's a good segue into talking about promotion because, uh, you know, the average artist shies away, doesn't love promotion, you know, kind of wants someone to come in and do it for them. Um, but it's probably even more difficult for someone who's an introvert. And I know you mentioned you worked with, we work with some people in this area. So what are the, like kind of the unique issues that introverts face as artists and how can they overcome them? Yeah, for, for introverts, for a lot of musician introverts, the ideal scenario is to be holed up in your home studio, playing your music and let that be enough, right? Like the idea of showing up on social media or networking is terrifying. And I'm half of an introvert. I'm extrovert, introvert, extra introvert. I don't know if there's an official name for that. So I totally relate. And, and I totally relate, for example, with this discomfort of showing up um, with on camera, doing a live, even like a podcast like this. And so you have to find ways that work for you. At the end of the day, there's not just one way to do things. You have to find what works for you. And maybe you're, you're a good writer. So maybe you can write blog posts for a music pub publication and get your name out there that way. Um, maybe you can do um, Instagram lives with someone else where they interview you. So it's not just you shooting a video but it's it's more of an exchange with another artist let's say there's also software you can use for example reels where you, it, it can be a, a storytelling thing right where you bringing people on a journey you don't even have to talk to the camera if you don't want to you can just write captions and and you know you, you can make things creatively and use your creativity and your personality to to make content that works for you and with the networking, for example, if you if you do go to a music event, which of, of course we recommend that you do, we recommend that you network and uh, meet other musicians and people in the industry. Networking doesn't mean you go to, to an event and you have to be the life of the party and you have to make people laugh and you have to talk to everyone. 
all you need to do is be there, be yourself, talk to even a couple of people that you feel would be good to meet, and then build those relationships from there, slowly, slowly. Yeah, those are some really good tips. I love the ideas of uh, getting on a live with someone else. And, you know, it's it's true for anybody that does something new, like easing into it is helpful and and doing it with somebody else, you know, like I know the first podcast that I did, like, I felt good that at least there was someone else there with me when I was interviewing. I knew that like, it was my job to like direct the conversation, but still I knew I didn't have to be talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that made it easier to start way back in 2015 when I started podcasting. Um, and, and so that's a really good tip or like maybe, you know, bring another musician friend with you to, uh, to an event if you need to, um, and maybe you both, you know, you target each a few people that you want to meet and then, you know, you do it together, right? You have a wing man, a wing person or whatever to, to help you out. That could be a way to do it. Um, I know that getting on video can be a little bit daunting, uh, especially for introverts. Um, and you mentioned a few tips on that, but do you have any more tips as far as how to help them just I've seen so many artists like literally be paralyzed by fear when it comes to making social media content with video. Yeah. So make it easy for yourself. What would be like, you have to ask yourself, what would be a little baby step that I'm willing to take, even if it's uncomfortable. So you do have to lean into the discomfort, but, but do it in a way like ease you, yourself in, like you said. So what would be a first baby step? Maybe it's just you putting your phone or on a tripod and just jamming with your instruments, pretending there's no one there, pretending there's not a camera looking and, and just shooting, shooting some content and then just taking a bit of that, right? Like, like you don't have to, to do something that really makes you feel like you want to throw up, <laughs> but, but you have to start somewhere. And the thing is, it's like everything it gets easier with practice. There's no way around this, right? Like the more you do it, the more comfortable you get, the more used you, you, the more used you, you, you are to, to doing it. And it's a practice and it's a skill. And like every skill, it can be learned. Yeah, so, I mean, we've all been through that getting on stage, right? At some point we'd never been on stage before and we had to step on stage for the first time. Yeah. You know, so we've all kind of been through that, but it's been so long for some of us because we've been performing on stage for so long. Like this is a totally new stage and we have to go through that again. And we don't remember what that was like to feel totally green and uncomfortable. Yes. And also you have to face, you know, like when, when we say face the fear, like really face the fear, which means ask yourself, what are you really worried about? What are you really scared about? You can even write this on a piece of paper. I'm really scared that I will feel judge I i'm really scared that that people might think whatever so put those fears on paper and then you can look at them from a from a distance so you start to to put them um in perspective in a way and start to ask yourself how true are those fears because our brain is a story making machine and most of the things that our brains make most of the stories are actually complete bullshit is it okay to swear on your show? I didn't ask. Before. Oh yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so you have to get real with your own thoughts and realize what is complete story making, what is a complete lie, what is real. And then for the things that feel more real, then ask yourself, okay, how can you what can you do to to di diminish the consequences if, if this were to happen, if this worst case scenario that you think is probable, uh, it were to happen, what would you do next? How would you bounce back from that? So it's really having a conversation with your fear and also giving that part of you that is scared and worried, giving it what it needs. So th this part of you is worried or scared for a reason because no one wants to feel like an outcast no one wants to feel judged. It comes from like those very basic needs to feel loved and to feel like you belong. So ask this part of you, what is it really afraid of? And then what, do you, what does this part of you need to hear? 
because then you get to access this, this other part of you, which is the wise, empowered, confident part of you that's also within you. And you get to, to, to talk from that part of you to the other part of you. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but we are made of all these different parts and they all need to be acknowledged and seen and heard. So it's like giving yourself the reassurance that you need in a way. Yeah. I mean, all of us have, have a confident part of ourselves that, you know, we are able to usually mentor or coach other people, but we have a hard time seeing our own issues or coaching ourselves. And so what you're saying is like, bring that part out and, mm -hmm. and coach yourself. Um, yeah. There's a lot of what you just said that I really like. Uh, I definitely tell artists to go down that worst case scenario thing. It's like, sometimes the fear is even blocking us from seeing what that worst case scenario would be. Like we just feel this generalized fear around it, but have we ever really diagnosed? Like, what do we think is going to happen for real? If I put myself out there on video, like what's the worst thing I think could happen? Oh, I would get, you know, I'd get a hater, I'd get a negative comment, whatever. And then you go beyond that. Okay, well, you know, then what would I do? Like you said, what would I do about that? Or where would that go? Where would that lead? Or like, you know, let's just say, okay, then, you know, 20 people unfollowed me because they believed that person and, and that I was a terrible artist or whatever. Okay, so 20 people unfollowed me. They probably weren't very good fans anyway, you know, and you just keep going down that and like realizing that that worst case thing really isn't that bad in the grand scheme of things. And exactly. then the the other thing that you, you know, we're kind of getting at that I think is really important is not to have shame around having that fear, right? Because we're just, our nature is to try to protect ourselves. We have that fight or flight. And so, like you said, you know, it makes sense that we have that fear because we are doing something uncomfortable and hard and maybe something we've never done before. Or, um, you know, that, that, like you said, we feel like we have these ideas of what might happen if we do it. And so we're immediately just running away, trying to run away from it in our mind. And that's, that's a natural inclination based upon just our humanity. But so we need to be okay with that. But then also like, these are the tools I need to use to train myself that this actually isn't something that I should be running away against. And it's not like so scary. Yeah. And you will only teach yourself that by doing it. Yeah. Once you do it once and you realize, oh, wow, I'm alive. I survived. So then you can do it again. And then you can take bigger and bigger steps, right? You can put yourself out there in a bigger, bigger way, one step at a time. So you're building that sense of confidence and, and trust and you're weakening the fears by actually taking that action. And then realize also what, could, what amazing things could happen because I'm putting myself out there in that way. Like, like you, can, you, you, you should think about maybe the, the fears and the worst case scenario, but also what is the best case scenario? What is that allowing me to do when I take that step? And who am I becoming when I take that step? What does that mean about me? Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I mean, not only does it start to give you FOMO, like, wow, if I don't do this thing, look what I'm going to miss out on. But also, like you said, like, I'm becoming, I can become this badass. Like I have this path in order to become this badass that I look at other people and they're just so they, they're on video all the time and there's it looks so easy for them and we desire to be like them and then we see oh there is a path to even become that and I could be that too yeah and then you'd be surprised then you can you get to look back on your journey and realize oh wow you can realize how far you've come and that's also really beautiful yeah absolutely well, what art, what um, advice do you have for artists that maybe are employing some of this and they feel like they're trying really hard, but they're just not having the kind of success in their career that they want? Yeah. So as we know, <laughs> a career in music is not like a straightforward, easy path, right? It's, it's definitely lots of highs and lows and there's moments where things seem to be working out, then there's stagnation or it, it can even feel like you're going backwards 
And first of all, is to accept that everything is cyclical, like in nature, we have summer, spring, winter, we have different cycles. And so is it's the same with your life and your career. So it's normal. The first thing to realize is that it's okay. It's normal that um, you might get to, to those places where it feels a little bit like, oh, what's happening? So first of all, like when you get into that mindset of there's nothing wrong with me experiencing this right now, it really lessens that anxiety around it. Like what if this was just a normal part of this journey? And also I feel, I feel like, you know, on the hero's journey, there's definitely dif difficulties along the path. There's also help along the path, right? Like you can also get support, you can hire help. And all these moments of difficulty can be exit points. So this is where you choose, like, am I going to exit? Am I going to give up? Or am I going to keep going? And if you keep going, that, that, mean, that also means you, you become a new person with each difficulty that you overcome. And, and again, like, look, when, when things don't, don't work out, like, it's, it's always really interesting to, to see what you make it mean. When, if, if you have... I don't know, like your show gets cancelled or you are not being signed by this manager or this agent that you wanted to representation from. Like, what do you make that mean about yourself, about your value, about your future? Because as, as human beings, I think we're very quick to make, um, what's the word, um, to, to predict, right? Like to predict the future. It's like as if we knew. <laughs> so be be stay aware and to to see whether you make that mean anything about yourself or about what it means for you in the music industry in the future because actually you have no idea what can happen in the future you have no idea where the uh, the next opportunity will come from and when so what i find is is personally i find it's really helpful to zoom out to really zoom out and see it from like a bigger perspective um so if, if you realize, okay, music is, is such a huge part of who I am and my essence, therefore, like, I'm always going to make music, right? Like, if you really see that you are always going to create music in one way or another, what does what's happening to you now mean in the grand scheme of things? I always find that really helpful. When I zoom out and I realize, okay, this is just like uh, maybe a blip in the journey, but really... If I look at, at the, the big picture and my career as a whole, it doesn't really mean much, right? You know, you know what I mean? Yes. No, the big picture is always really helpful. But the other thing is, like you said, reminding them like, okay, so what if you were to quit? Are you going to stop making music? Like how, like I know your soul is fed by making music. So if you, you know, were to stop making music, how would that affect your life? You know, so I, I think most musicians would be like, I don't think I'm going to stop or my might stop for a little bit. But I know for me, I had this time period once I had my first daughter, when I thought, oh, I'm not doing music anymore. Now I'm a mom. And that lasted for like six weeks. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't not do music. Like I have to do it in some way. Yeah. So, um, you know, sometimes you just need a little sabbatical you know, or just a little time yeah. off, you're burnt out, you're, you, you know, you've been pedaling really hard, and you feel like you're, you know, still on first gear or whatever, not going very fast. Sometimes you just need to like, get off, <laughs> recalibrate, and then, you know, let yourself rest for a bit and then get back on. And you can pedal a lot faster instead of just like pedaling in first gear forever. And let's like, you know, white knuckling it and all that. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's some really good advice that you gave as far as, um, just thinking and, about and, it in the big picture, for sure. I, there's been yeah. so many ups and downs in, in my career and a lot of the artists that I've interviewed. Yeah. And, and like you said, it's totally okay. If you decide to step back for a little bit to ease the pressure and maybe to focus on a different creative project or a different part of your life, knowing that you will come back refreshed with, a different perspective because again with mindset it's really important to 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 stay aware of where is your focus because when things are not working out 
typically, I mean, we do have a negativity bias as humans. We tend to fixate on what is not working and on the negative much more than what we do on the positive. So especially on those moments, like you have to stay aware and, and see, am I just fixating on what's not working? Am I just focusing on the problem here? Or am I focusing on a possible solution? Am I focusing on my progress? Even though I'm not where I want to be right now, still there's been progress. Like every day, actually, you take you take action. There's progress. Uh, are you focusing on your resources and what's actually possible for you and what is in your control? And what is in your control is definitely how you um, how you experience the situation. So your emotions, your expectations, um, your ability to to change your focus and your perspective. So that is in your control. So there's always a way to make those, those tricky moments easier on yourself and to pick yourself back up. And maybe it is stepping back or maybe it's also, what do I need to do to feel better about this, about myself? What, what are my tools that, I, that work for me to pick myself back up and to get back on the horse? And to stay committed, because I think with music, like you said, like even if you want to run away from it as an artist, you can't, right? It's, it's who you are. It's just a vital part of your well-being and your health and not, I mean, your, your happiness and your fulfillment. And, um, and I think with, with those types of careers, it's not like you make a decision once. It's, it's in a way you recommit to it. Sometimes you have to recommit to do the work, the inner work, the outer work. And, and you know, it's like a relationship. Uh, ideally, if you're married, for example, you, you don't stay married because there's a piece of paper that has been signed. You, ideally, you choose the person every day and you work through the, the problems. So it's the same with your, with your music career. It's like, how can you choose your music career again and again and, and, and recommit and work through the, the issues? Yeah, I love that. And and also, you know, knowing what motivates you. So, you know, I always say that like fans, you know, one of the important reasons to have fans is to remind you why it's important not to quit. Because, you know, if there are people, even if there's 30 of them, 100 of them, whatever, like, you know, it, there, we never have as many as we want. But we have to remember that the ones we have are actually going to be bummed out if we stop making music, you know, they're actually waiting around going, when are you going to put out your next song? You know, so you have to remember who those people are and that they're, that they exist. And even if there's not as many as you want, there are some and, you know, focus on, on those people and, you know, create something for yourself where you can remind yourself how much those people care. You know, maybe they've responded to some of your emails and you've got those saved in a folder, or maybe they've put, you know, comments on your social media that you can, you can go back and look at, you know, or save them in a document or something like that. Sometimes we just need to remember the impact that we're making outside of ourselves. And it isn't totally about ourselves. Of course it is. We have to feel, you know, we have to feel fulfilled and all that. We also have to remember that, you know, there are other people out there that are being impacted by what we're doing and that, you know, we're doing it for them too. Exactly. And you should totally save those, those comments and uh, any, any person that writes to you to tell you how you really helped them maybe through a rough patch they had in their lives because the lyrics, you know, your, your songs talk about that kind of topic. You should definitely keep track of those comments and keep, like you said, keep them in a document. And maybe you will look at it, maybe not, but just knowing that it's there, knowing like it's like remembering because sometimes we just forget. So it's like remembering how your work is important, remembering that it has a real impact in the world, and also remembering your why. Like the, this is like back to basics. Remembering your why. Why are you even on this uh, artistic path? Why is it important to you? How does like what? What is your purpose? Why are you even doing this in the first place? And what makes the journey worth it? Exactly. What makes the journey worth it? That's really great. Um, this has been so good. Thank you so much um, for delving into these subjects that I think really are the underlying things that help us make income, become profitable as a musician. 
where can people find you online so they can continue this conversation? So they can check my website, olympiacoaching.com. That's O-L-Y-M-P-I-A coaching.com. Um, I've got some free resources on there, um, lots of content and some coaching programs um, to support artists with all that mindset stuff and to help them find clarity, direction and feel more confident so that they can achieve their goals. So, and I'm also on Instagram, same thing, Olympia Coaching. Olympia Coaching on Instagram. Great. Yeah, and I, I, and I do offer free consultations. So if you're interested in those kind of topics, if what we chatted about today resonates, then feel free to book a consultation with me. I would love to hear from you and, and to get to know you more. Absolutely. And you get to enjoy more of her lovely accent. It's such a, it's a cool accent. It's French, but like, I can, I can hear that you lived in, in London for a while, a little bit, you know, I don't know if I would recognize the Spanish, but it's, it's a, it's a cool accent because it is mostly French, but I was like, what is that in there? And then you said you lived in London. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, uh, thank you so much, Ariane. This has been really good. It's been a great conversation that we haven't had in a while on this podcast. So I'm glad that we covered these subjects and I hope our listeners reach out um, and connect with you. And thank you so much for all of your knowledge and expertise and sharing it with our listeners. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician. 